Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Michelle, fetch me a cup of in. <laughs> Just a little uh, secretary joke. Right, uh, <clears throat> November the 29th. The Dennis Hobson next show. Ponds Ford. We've got Josh Whale headlining. Tommy Frank, Cash Alley, Tyrone Nurse, Nathan Owen, Sufian Ahmad, Ahmed, Liam Dring, Irving Magdow, two, four, six, ten fights there, and uh, be a good night of boxing. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add up all the all the predictions in from the prediction league and uh, I'm going to tell you the winner uh, I'm probably going to do that two weeks before as agreed uh, this time last year I said I was going to do prediction league I went around about Christmas and everybody laughed well all those people that have been sending your predictions in well it's all coming to an head now and uh, the winner is going to get two tickets VIP to Denny Sobson Promotions Boxing Show and two tickets to the after party so whoever that is remains to be seen uh, I want to thank all them people that have sent in itch, that have sent in uh, all your predictions uh, if I'd have stayed in, if I'd have stayed in prediction league, I would have been clearly winning it because I've been on fire lately. But I pulled out a few months ago because if I'd have said I've won it, it wouldn't have been fair, would it? I mean, what's the point in having a competition if I'm going to have tickets to, for myself? So the the winner, as I said, will get two tickets, and uh, I might even sort you out over. Uh, a couple of porky goodies, alright, a mug or whatever, t shirt or something, but we'll see where we go. But keep your predictions coming in, uh, we're only just into October now, so it's all good, isn't it? We're only just into October, and it's all, it's all, it's all good, positive stuff, isn't it? It's all good positive stuff and like I said the winner I'll have a good night and like I said I'll end up I'll, I'll end up uh, having a drink with you that night if 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 I'm in mood if I'm not in mood I'll have an orange juice or a coffee and uh, I'll make sure that you have a good night like I said the winner uh, there's two tickets there's not one ticket there's two tickets for the winner and that's obviously if you want to come with your partner whoever wins it come with your partner if you want to bring a pal bring a pal but like I said two tickets for the winner of the prediction league we like to keep his word here uh, Dennis Hobson promotions but like I said this is through through my channel Porky's Corner through my well mine and Nicholas channel uh, so alright so So it's all good positive stuff in it. It's all good positive stuff. So two seconds because we're ready for finishing here in a minute. In a minute. 
Yeah, I'll see you there about five o'clock. I've got my cue with me. All right, Paul. Cheers, mate. Uh, so that's about it really, that's regarding the Prediction League, uh, obviously I've just told you who's on the show November 29th, things could change because there's still 29, 39, 49, 49, 49 what's that, 58, there's still eight and a half weeks to go to the show, so still a fair bit of time to go eight week, by the time you get this video it might be eight weeks to go to the show, but eight weeks so all you hardcore boxing fans out there who keep emailing me and I love your emails thank you very much I love all, I love to read all your comments every Friday morning I love to read your comments and what I'm gonna do this Friday I'm just gonna read your comments and turn the camera towards the screen uh, so keep your comments coming and like I said good or bad keep them coming Obviously, I'd be a fool if I said that I like bad comments. I don't. Nobody likes being insulted or abused. It's, I think it's part of parcel of it. If you put yourself out there, you've got to take criticism. So it's water for ducks back to me now, but it didn't used to be. But keep your comments coming, and all you on fake accounts, keep them coming as well, because we love a bit of banter, don't we, Steffi? <laughs> Hashtag levels. Right. I've jotted a few things down and we've had some uh, input from some people. When you email me, it, could you, when you're asking me questions, right, because what we're going to be doing is a Ask Porky, could you put a hashtag in with your email? If you put at the end of it, say for instance your name's Gertrude from Barnsley. Gertrude from Barnsley, Barnsley, put uh, Porky, who's your favourite boxer, from Gertrude at Barnsley, but then put hashtag ask, por ask Porky, so I can separate them because there's, as the, as the channel begins to grow, uh, obviously, I don't want to get it mixed up because there's, there's that much going through my head at the moment, sometimes I just I can't computerise it all but for example obviously when I started the channel uh, a lot of people were like oh, wet in the pants weren't they oh what are you doing your head's gone and you'll never work and all that well I don't like to go on subscribe descriptions and all that and I tend to go on the, the average views that we're getting so we don't get no press access do we but we're averaging you know a fair if you go back on the last couple of months, we're getting a fair few views from something that started out as a bit of a joke, really. We just something me and Rico did. Just I don't know. Rico helped me out, and he deserves a lot of credit. And if we ever pull anything off with channel, I'll make sure that he gets a good drink. But he's been great with me, Rico, and the people's brains that I've picked along the way has been good as well. Terry Chapman Darm has been good. We do have our fallouts uh, every now and then, uh, but, you know, he's a good guy, Terry, good boxing guy, so I could wring his fucking neck at times. I do want to apologise though about the swearing. Now, swearing is not good, uh, it's not good at all, so I, do want, I want to apologise about that. But, uh, I want to give a shout out to somebody who watches the channel all the time. And he's a good lad. I met his parents at show. Crusher, how you doing, Crush? I hope you're all right. I think this is you on on my Facebook. I don't have anything to do with Facebook, uh, because I don't understand how it works. I do Twitter though, but I don't understand the Facebook. I don't know how, know how to get it up. I think that's you on on Facebook. Is it Crush? How are you doing? I hope you're all right. I hope that you're sticking to your training regime, Crusher, because I'm hearing that you're a tiny little boxer. But you've got a long way to go, haven't you, before your first fight. But I hope to see you in three week. Alright? I hope to see you in three week at next show. Okay, because there's an amateur show in three week. So I'll see you there, Crush. And uh, that's at Mick Wales Gym in Mexico so all you people who want to go to a, 
an, an amateur boxing show and it's like the it's like the grassroots of boxing isn't it because we are amateur fighters coming through there ain't going to be no pros is there so I hope that uh, all you hardcore boxing fans are going to get to Mick Wales show on October the 23rd uh, people might say oh, I've got better things to do and all that well people were saying that you need to start asking yourselves am I really an hardcore or am I casual come on next time you're thinking about ordering a Chinese or buying a couple of four packs from Aldi uh, or one four pack if it's from uh, McCall's because <laughs> it's dear in there don't drink it and don't eat it or buy it that Chinese come and get a ticket for boxing at Mick Wales show uh, I've become really close to the Wales family and I've seen how they operate as regards boxing and they like the Mark Tibbs and Jimmy Tibbs they like the Tibbs family the proper people proper proper people so is that Ray the Messer? Right, I'm filming at the moment, Messer, so you'll see this on uh, on channel. I'm going to get all Porky followers to give you some stick now, next time that you put you go on YouTube, because you're the type of person that says you're coming to a boxing show, and uh, I have two tickets reserved for you, and you don't turn up. you like Stig, aren't you? There's talkers and there's cheese and onion walkers, alright? Catch you later. I'll just cut him off. Raymondo is called. If you see him in the comments section on YouTube, give him some stick. Now, them tickets could have gone to somebody else, couldn't they? Who, uh, who would have been appreciative of, him, of, of the tickets, wouldn't they? Because every show, I invite somebody down don't know, who I like. So, alright. Or who, who I think has good input and a positive influence. So, but anyway, we're trying to talk positive and not negative. There's going to be no more swearing and no more hammering people. We're just going to look for positive stuff, all right? So, I don't know how long I'm going to keep that up. Probably about an hour. But, I want people to go to Mick Wales' show on October 23rd because they're putting a lot of effort in for little reward now. There's people eating at the top table in boxing like Joshua. 40, 50 million is getting for Saudi. That money is not trickling down. You've got Joshua up here, world champion, then you've got Euro level, British, Commonwealth, English, area level. And you've got area level kids getting a couple of grand. It's not, there's, the, the gap's unbelievable. And boxing's going to suffer, in my opinion, moving forward. So, I want people like Crusher and his mum and dad, they go to the shows, they dig deep on that. I don't know their financial situation, but they dig, they dig deep. Other people dig deep, and maybe they might have some on that night, but people manage to make, make these shows. Like, I see Lisa Bailey goes to the shows all the time. She's always at Glynn's gym. She's something to do with SBC up, up there. People sometimes should put boxing it, should, it shouldn't just be an afterthought. I want people to start making a bit more effort. There's a lot of people who, who aren't making the effort, but they have plenty to say on social media. And I don't, I don't think that's fair. Come and support these boxing shows and let's get these kids paid. It's only us, the fans, that can make a difference. Uh, I noticed Ryan Rhodes and Steffi Bull's show didn't, didn't do that many tickets. It's not because they're bo not boxing people. It's, it's, I don't know if it's a society problem or what, or if it has a knock-on effect. Boxing isn't just about going to an Anthony Joshua show or, you know, going to a, I don't know, who else sells tickets apart from Joshua, a Tyson Fury show. It, it's about other people. It's about growing the sport. We're going to have, I think what's going to happen is, they're going to make that much money through Joshua, then they're not going to be bothered about everybody else, the establishment. Look, Frank Warren gets a lot of stick. He doesn't get as much from me nowadays, but he has had stick in past, because when he was top dog, I felt that they were getting away with murder with some of the shows they were putting on. But, he's planning for the future. He'll always be here. 
right? He's always thinking that outside the box and thinking down the line. But Frank can't do it without the fans. We can't do it without the fans. If I could show some of your boxing fans some of the figures that's involved we're putting these shows on, it's unbelievable. People are quick to criticise, but yet them who are criticising are not doing their bit. So come on, do your bit. Come on, get to Mick Wales show. It's in Doncaster in Mexborough, October 23rd. Uh, second, what date is it today? What date is it today? I don't know what date is it, second or something today. Third. Look, it's October the 23rd, Mick Wales show, right? At his gym in Mexborough. Now, come on, get to these shows. Get support in these shows. And get, get coming to our shows as well. November 29th. I just want to see a better turnout and start supporting these boxers. Um, I think what we've got, there's a lot of people on Twitter and YouTube and Instagram and Facebook that are saying that they're massive boxing fans, but you have to ask yourself, how many shows a year do you really go to? I mean, you've got to go to at least 10 shows a year. 10 shows a year to get your hardcore badge. If you're not doing 10 shows a year, you're not an hardcore boxing fan. That's amateur and professional. So come on, get these shows. Come on, let's see you at these shows. Whether it be Dennis's show, Steffi Ball and Ryan Rhodes' shows, because they're partners now. Carl Greaves, Neil Marsh. If you're at Mick Wales amateur shows, come on, let's see some of these boxing fans at these shows. All right, let's see some of these boxing fans. Come on, we know you can do it. If you can tune into Porky's Corner and, and, and average watch time, 12 and a half minutes. Average watch time for my videos is 12 and a half minutes all the way all the way across the board. Right? If you can sit and watch me and listen to me talking whatever I'm talking, pony, for 12 and a half minutes, surely you can put some effort into going to these boxing shows. Alright. Now I just want to have a I just want to have a quick mention about a few things here. Will Terence Crawford jump ship? I see Eddie Earns now stirring the pot, isn't he? Regarding Terence Crawford and um, saying he's not being promoted right and blah de blah. I don't know if Terence Crawford's gonna jump shit, but uh, I don't know. But what I do know is that he's a classy fighter and. I want to see Terence Porter fight Sean, Terence Crawford fight Sean Porter. That's what I want to see next, then we can judge judge him, can't we? Alright, I'd like to see that fight, Terence Crawford against Sean Porter. So, I'd like to see Terence Crawford against Errol Spence, but I don't think that either one of them are going to risk it. Uh, people are saying Errol Spence has lost his mojo because he didn't stop. Sean Porter. Well, Sean Porter, in my opinion, is tough as old boots, isn't he? But he fights like he's drowning, doesn't he? So, that's what Errol Spence says, and I agree with him. I think that's quite. There's nothing funny about somebody drowning, so touch with that doesn't happen to anybody. But, he just fights like he's rushing everything, and I think Kel, Kel Brook's performance against him were good. But uh, I'd like to see Terence Crawford uh, against Errol Spence, though. But Errol Spence, for me, is he's the man at 147. I'd like to see Errol Spence fight uh, Amir Khan. Uh, will we see Kel Brook against Amir Khan? Well, it's lost its sparkle, like Dennis says that, isn't it? But it is what it is, isn't it? So, but. Bob Adam needs to get a move on with him. I mean, what is Bob Adam doing at the moment? I think he's lost plot. I mean, he's paying Tyson Fury millions and millions and millions to fight who? Who? Who's Tyson fighting at the moment? They're not mentioning Wilder's name, is he? But it is what it is. Good luck to Bob Adam. Uh, he could survive a nuclear blast, just like Frank Warren. Uh, but Eddie Earns staring pot with Crawford. That's not no, is it? He'd love to sign him money. 
He'd love to put Crawford in with Lamachenko, wouldn't he? Benavitez versus Smith for WBC. Where is Callum Smith going? Callum Smith is waiting for the Canelo payday. That's what he's waiting for. There's no big paydays at 168. Callum Smith's not a pay-per-view fighter uh, at all. At all. He doesn't sell a ticket. So he can only get a pay-per-view if they put him in with the right fight, which would be Canelo. Now, Canelo's never going to fight in England. He's always going to have home advantage. Always, always, always. That's just how it is. That's just how... Uh, that's just how boxing goes. It's like Mayweather. They're going to want the cards stacked in their favour every time. So... It is what it is, isn't it? But they're going to want the f they're going to want cards stacked in their favour every time, just like Andre Ward. Just like Andre Ward he wants to fight at home all the time. His ring choice, his glove choice, his referee choice, his judges choice, and his arena choice, and his country. Tell me a title fight Andre Ward's fought in outside America. None. Right, so Callum Smith against Benavides, will it happen? No, there's no money in the fight, plus it's an hard fight. Is there money in a Canelo fight? Yes, there's big money in a Canelo fight. Will they take that fight? Yes, because that's like getting the Mayweather fight, isn't it? Or the Joshua fight. They're the lottery winning tickets. So, look, Rocky Field in Gorrit, didn't he? One minute he's living in a semi detached house in Liverpool. Rocky from Stocky. Next minute he's living in a big five bedroom gaff in West Derby, so it is what it is, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? But Callum Smith, we hear a lot of hype about Callum Smith, but who has Callum Smith beat? Who is Callum Smith's top four wins? Who? Who? Groves is his best win, he was injured. Joe Gallagher wouldn't give him any uh, more time to recover from his injury so that's that's uh, his best win George Groves who were injured his second best win you'd have to say Hassan and Dam who he's just beat what are he 40 year old 40 year old what are he 40 year old career middleweight fighting a massive super middle massive so so third best win who's his third best win who oh. Rocky Fielding claim to fame is he got knocked out by Canelo who's Rocky Fielding's best win John Ryder and Rabras that's it but I thought he got beat in them fights Callum Smith is fighting John Ryder next. Who Rocky Fielding's beat? And Billy Joe Saunders has beat John Ryder as well at domestic level. And Callum Smith fighting him next in a world title defence. <laughs> Where is Callum Smith going? What 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 is Eddie Hearn doing to Callum Smith? 2020 is going to be Callum Smith's year according to Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn said that 2019 were going to be Callum Smith's year. Look, Callum Smith, let me, let me spell this out again to people without swearing. Callum Smith does not sell a ticket. Callum Smith does not have a personality. Can Callum Smith fight? Yes. Is he world class? Yes. Is he controversial? No. Does he tip tables over and throw water and rant and rave and slag off his opponent? No. Is Callum Smith a nice guy? Yes. Is he a family man? Yes. So, he's a nice kid, isn't he? So, it is what it is, isn't it? But, er... Uh, but John Ryder next is, it's not good is it? 
when John Ryder gets in the ring and stands next to Callum Smith, everybody's going to say, Porky, you was right. That's what they're going to say, aren't they? So, but it is what it is. Callum Smith homecoming. Callum Smith's homecoming. Coming home. Coming home from what? Nicky Holtson in Saudi. George Groves in Saudi. Or it, well, wherever they fought, didn't they? And uh, Hassan and Dam in New York. Homecoming. Coming home from where? Coming home from where? Hey. Callum Smith. Fighter at year. Unbelievable. How is Callum Smith fighter at year? It's uh, always a beat to be fighter at year. What has Joe Gallagher done to be a trainer at year? What? What? Where? Where are people coming from with these awards? Who's handing these awards out? Oh, <laughs> the same. Who is handing these awards out? The same people that. Is it the same people that give Freddie Flint off? A boxing license for one fight, but yet not Nigel Benbach because he's 55. I don't know, but don't British Boxing Board of Control know what they're doing? No. Why are they called the British Boxing Board of Control when they're not in control of anything? We all know who's controlling British Boxing Board of Control, don't we? It isn't the British Boxing Board. They couldn't control uh, sh sh in a brewery. Right. So look, did Callum Smith want his cake and eat it, Porky? Uh, yeah, I think he did. I think his manager, Joseph Gallagher, the man who ruined the the man who ruined the generation of fighters, his manager has never took any risks with his fighters. For example, Callum, uh, not Callum Smith. What's he called? Is it Callum? Not Callum. What's he called now? forget. Joe Gallagher don't take any, any risk with his fighters. Paul Smith and Liam Smith, right? They've never beat a champion in their careers. For example, Tony Bellew, British Commonwealth, European and World Champion, but they were all vacant belts. David Price, British and Commonwealth Champion, vacant belts. But they're not Gallagher fighters, are they? But, again, but I'm just saying... It sets a trend, doesn't it? Then you've got Liam Smith, British Commonwealth and WBO, WBO champion. Liam Smith has never beat a champion. Never beat a champion at all in his career. But he's known as a former world champion, former British and Commonwealth champion. But he never beat a champion, so I don't get that. I don't get it. Paul Smith... English champion, British champion, never beat a champion. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Joe Gallagher ruined a, a generation of fighters. Joe, if I see you, I'll tell you to your face. I don't want to be negative. I like to be positive, but it's very hard to be in this game when you've got people that are getting awards and nobody dares say a word about these people. Or None of these YouTubers say a word, do they, hardly? It's left to the hardcores, the boxing asylum, and you know your I feel boxing and new age boxing and Porky's Corner to say something. World record, world world breaker fighting. Shout out to Adonis. How are you doing, mate? Over in Texas, it's left to people like us to say something. Nobody dare say anything in the industry because they want to work with these people down the line. Yeah, I do get people coming up to me at shows and saying, oh, you were a bit harsh on, on, on me there, Porky. I said, I'm not going to mention who, but why were I harsh? Well, you didn't have to say that. I said, were it true? Well, yeah, but it's just how you put it. Well, how did I put it? What do you want me to say? I'm really sorry, but that guy there didn't really beat anybody in top 50. Joe Bloggs, I'm not going to say his name, we'll call him Joe. You didn't beat anybody in top 50, but yet you're saying you're... You're going to do this and going to do that. Well, I'm just telling it the truth. Can't we tell the truth no more? It's like, I know somebody that won recently, but in my opinion, he didn't win. Went down like a lead balloon. We've got to be true to ourselves and just tell it as we see it, haven't we? 
Now, did Callan Smith want his cake and eat it? The answer is, yes, he did. He made millions and millions in that WBSS tournament. And I tip my hat to Joe Gallagher. Well done, Joseph Gallagher. But you also took a third of that money, Joe, yourself, didn't you? Without throwing a punch. So, Joe Gallagher, you are not trainer of the year. You are genius of the decade because... Everybody that's been in your gym that has been smashed to bits or not achieved anything apart from Callum Smith. Crawler. Well, Crawler's a vacant belt. I'm not sure. I have to have a look at Anthony Crawler's career. How many world champions has Crawler beat? Well, Ricky Burns were washed up. And you can pick holes. Crawler's career has got more holes in it than Swiss cheese, but he had a great story, didn't he? But, well... There's some people debating the actual facts of what we're being told about that story, but so I can't comment on that because I don't know the full facts. I know Crawler's a nice guy, and I know that when Eddie Earn rings you, if you're nice to him, he he, uh, he looks after you. So we all know that Bell, you and Crawler are his top two. So that's good. That's good. But I think Eddie Earn needs to come out and start saying that Carl Froch put him where he is now. Carl Froch, let me tell you, going in the Super 6 and fighting the guys that he did and afterwards, Carl Froch made Eddie Earn, not Eddie Earn made Eddie Earn, because Eddie Earn already slipped into that position, didn't he, that his dad gave him, we already ready made, a bit like Billy Joe Saunders and Dominic Ingle, somebody handed Billy Joe Saunders to Dominic Ingle, well we know that word, don't we? Jimmy Tibbs made Billy Joe Saunders. Jimmy Tibbs. British area title. British Commonwealth European and World Champion. Plus he won a few trinket belts as well. All with Jimmy Tibbs. So as far as I'm concerned, Jimmy Tibbs is the man with Billy Joe Saunders. He taught Billy Joe Saunders about when to finish off your opponent and how not to get hit. Billy Joe Saunders does not get hit. And if you look at Dillian White, he's not been beat with Mark Tibbs, has he? Richard Riakpo, he's not, or I might have said that wrong, he's not getting beat, is he, with Mark Tibbs? Who's the other guy? Harvey Horn. He's not been beat with Mark Tibbs, has he? Mark Tibbs is a winner. I'm not saying that because I class him as a pal and that I'm in touch with him now. He's a winner. And for Mark Tibbs not to be up for trainer at year and Joe Gallagher to be up for it, shocking. After what Joe Gallagher did with Marcus Morrison, shocking. I mean, I wouldn't have even had Joe Gallagher in top five for trainer at year. Mark Tibbs were, were, were one of my trainers at year. And the other one were Don Charles. So, it's boxing, isn't it? It's boxing. Uh, it is what it is, isn't it? Did Callum Smith want his cake and eat it? Yeah, we mentioned that. Uh, and then he's crawled back to Sky. Callum's crawled back to Sky on their hands and knees. They've got the money from there, from, from the WBSS tournament. And Joe Gallagher has been round the house as he spoke to everybody. Leonard Ellerby. <laughs> he spoke to Aunt Leonard Ellaby, Todd LaBeouf at top rank, Calla Sourland spoke to them, even spoke to Frank Warren. He spoke to all them, Joe Gallagher, and none of them have signed Callum yet. None of them. He's just doing it to have a bit of leverage with Eddie Earn. That's all he's doing it for, leverage. First of all, if anybody's going to take Callum Smith on, if he leaves Eddie Earn, because his contract's up in it, if anybody's going to take him on, First thing they're going to say is, does he sell a ticket? No. All the Smiths on a show in Liverpool with David Price and all the rest of them, all them Scouse lot, they don't even sell Echo Arena art. You could put ten Scousers on at the Echo Arena and they couldn't sell it out, even with Bellew. They don't sell tickets. Liverpool is a very, very hard sell for boxing. 
I don't know where people keep saying that it's an art, it's easy to sell tickets in Liverpool. It's not easy, it's tough. Tony Bell, you fought at Goodison Park, they had to put ring into the corner. They had to pull the ring into the corner when Tony Bellew fought at Gunnison Park. It wasn't on pay-per-view, it was on free-to-air, Sky TV. Free-to-air. They pulled ring into the corner. And they still, they still couldn't do... They, couldn't, they didn't even sell half, they sold a third of it. Pull ring in corner, Liverpool's an hard sell. The football mad up there, aren't they? Football's where they're specialists. They're not specialists in boxing, it's not like Manchester. Derry Matthews is the biggest ticket seller in Liverpool. Derry Matthews. You could even put Derry on and you might probably sell Echo Art if you put Derry in with all them. It's an hard sell. It's very, very hard. I'm not bothered what anybody says to me, you're being hard on Scousers. No, it's an hard sell. Liverpool's hard. So, will Big Truck win a world title, David Price? David Price has knocked back a fight with Dubois and Joe Joyce in the last 72 hours. So... Is that the mental approach of uh, somebody that's going to win a world title? No. They're talking about David Price fighting for a world title, right? Since Povetkin iced him, and I mean, he not only iced him, he, he, he took something from him that night. He took his soul, Povetkin. David Price, since then, has had a dodgy stoppage against Tom Little, who I've met. I like Tom Little. Spent a bit of time with him in Bulgaria. He's a nice guy. I like him. He's one of the best travelling kids I've ever met. But Tom Little will tell you himself. He is area level. He's area level. Cash Alley were disqualified against David Price. Cash Alley's won an area belt. So he is area level stroke English level. Because that's what you got to after area. I'm only talking hypothetically here in stats. David Price won a British and a Commonwealth, so he's here, right? And he did that years ago, seven years ago on it. But he hasn't got a British and a Commonwealth now. Dubois has got that, and he beats David Price. David Price has failed at Euro level because he's just been stopped by Povetkin, who's not world level no more. He's Euro level Povetkin, stroke world level, right? So he's got knocked out against Povetkin, so Price is not Euro level. He can't beat Dubois at British or, or Commonwealth, so he drops down. David Price is probably English level. So David Price is English level. Tom Little, he beat him in a dodgy stoppage. He's area level and stopped him. So he's still English level, isn't he? Because he won't fight Dubois, but he's been British. David, David Allen. David Allen is journeyman level stroke area level because David Allen has not won an area belt everything he's ever stepped up to fight for he's lost and he doesn't own an area belt Price has got a British Cash Alley has got an area belt and Tom Little David Tom Little David Allen and Cash Alley have never won an, an English belt so David Allen's below area level, then you've got area cash alley and you'd say Tom Little, you'd say even though he's not won an area belt, you'd say he's area level. Dave Allen, maybe I'll be in harsh on him. They're area level fighters. Cash alley, Tom Little, Dave Allen, area level. David Al David Price stopped all three of them, didn't he? Well, one were a disqualification, but that's like a stoppage in it, I suppose. He was looking for a way out, Cash. We've signed Cash Alley now. And Richard Richard Towers is going to get him into a position where his head's going to be right. And you never know. But we think that he could have beat David Price that night. That's what we think if Richard had been in corner. So I'm not saying that because Richard Dennis is trainer now. But that's what we think. And looking at the fight, you'd say that David Price were unfolding with his fitness. I don't know. But he beat Dave Allen well, but he won every round against Dave Allen. But as far as I'm concerned, Dave Allen's skill sets to take punishment. That's what he does. He plods forward because he's tough and takes punishment, doesn't he? He's got big, strong legs. He can take a shot. But let's have it right. David Price is his English level. Because he's but he's talking about world title fights. Do me a favour, you never beat a champion in his career. 
British and Commonwealth were vacant belts for David Price. Yeah, he's got an Olympic bronze, fair enough. But he's shot to pieces, and he is, in my opinion, English level. He's an English level guy. He knows what level he's at. He's been around boxing long enough. He would offer good money to fight Joyce, and very good money to fight the barn. He didn't take it. Now, in my opinion, that's bottling it. Bottle job. But it is what it is, isn't it? Good luck to Big Truck. But we keep it real on this on this channel, all right? So, David Price should have fought the bar, got a British and Commonwealth belt, and then you'd have a world title off back of that, wouldn't you? If you'd have fought the bar, right? We've done the Tyson Fury video against uh, Deontay Wilder. Yes, two long counts there. And, and like I said, it was 20 seconds and 23 seconds before the fight carried on. God, I mean, how much longer did the R Jack Rice give uh, Tyson to, to recover? Shocking. Uh, Nicky Smedley's making a comeback. Nicky Smedley, is, is that good? Do I think, do I think Nicky Smedley coming back for boxing is good? I think Nicky Smedley's 16 and 1, is he? He's still got a lot to offer. Do I think it's good? Yeah, it's good for boxing. I like Nicky Smedley, he's still young, he's still fit. He's getting up in the morning doing runs. He does a lot of tickets. So yeah, I think that's good. And um, would I like to see that fight him fight somebody? Yeah, I would have liked to see Nicky Smedley do well. I class him as a close friend. Him, his brother and his dad are all very good friends of mine. Uh, Nobody, uh, let's just say, right, there's the tough kids, Luke Smedley and his brother Nicky are very tough kids, and I like them, and let's just say that nobody takes liberties with them in Sheffield, so, but they're tough kids, and I'd like to see Nicky come back, and I'd like to see his dad Chris and Luke in corner, and I'm going to give him a ring, uh, sometime this week and uh, go see Nicky and have a chat about his comeback so I think that would be good I think it would be on a Dennis show uh, I don't think we've got him on for, on for November 29th I don't think I've put him on here but uh, we just uh, I'll leave a note for Dennis Dennis what about What about Nicky Smedley for November 29th? Question mark. That's before I forget. One. We've got a list here for 29. So it's all good. Positive. It's all good. Positive stuff. It's all good. Positive stuff in it. Put that there. There's vitamin D tablets. I'm like a doctor, aren't I? Hey, right. next up, next I'll be washing Dennis's car and making him a cup of tea. Well, I uh, come on like that. But yes, yeah, so it's all good positive stuff. Yes, I'd like to see Nicky Medley come, Nicky Smedley come back. Uh, but it is what it is, isn't it? So it's boxing, isn't it? It's an hard game, isn't it? Boxing's a very, very hard sport. It's for hard people. It's not for soft people like me. I won't last two minutes in ring, would I, me? So, donuts like me, they go to prison for no, don't we? And we spend years walking around in circles talking to yourself. Except now that uh, I'm making a living out of it. <laughs> but, here's where it is, isn't it? So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Shout out, Crusher. Keep training, Crusher. Keep doing your best. And keep tidying your bedroom at home. And do your own work, Crusher. I don't want to hear any, any reports from your mum and dad, Crush that you're not doing your own work or that you're messing about in Glynn's gym keep your head down and keep boxing so peace out keep on trucking and uh, shout out to uh, Steve Crump at Cozy Homes and uh, Innovative Alloys alright peace I just want to make a quick alteration to that last little bit a uh, shout out to J&J Crump uh, for cosy homes and innovation alloys 
uh, at Sheffield. Alright, so peace out, keep on trucking.